Hey guys, so the idea of this video is uh, pretty much show you the benefits of having multi GPU to do training and here on Copcat and Nuke. So I have quickly set up here a Copcat model to train and then uh, this is a pretty large batch size of 50 so I'm using 6 GPU here and then uh, I find out that for this data set, I'm gonna explain everything later, uh, I can max out the VRAN on the 6 GPU by using 50 batch size and the model size is large. So uh, let me just hit uh, training here and let's just wait for how long we'll need to reach the 10,000 epochs. So let's just wait a little bit and let's find out. So here we go guys, so you know to reach the 10,000 epochs on this training, on this multi GPU training, we would need roughly 5 to 6 hours ish. So in 6 hours we're gonna reach those 10,000 epochs, so that's the number. Uh, now I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna try to train the exact same settings and then just train in one GPU and let's figure out how much is the difference actually. Let me cancel this. And now just go to settings and then go to hardware and then we're gonna just disable all GPUs enable here. So let's disable multi GPU support, save it. Let me save this project. And then we need to quickly reopen Nuke, close. And now we have disabled multi GPU. So let me reopen that project. Here we go. So now let's do the exact same training. You can see now the big difference, of course, it is that we no longer see all the six GPUs because we disabled that in the preferences. And then I'm gonna just hit training. And then now same settings, 50 bed size, and then start training. And now Nuke is gonna just use one GPU to do this. And now we see that actually we are not no longer able to train this model on these settings so which means we cannot longer train on large size we can no longer train on the 50 of the bed size that's because we don't have vrun enable to allow us to do that because before we had six gpu so they are combined and then you could do it but now we no longer have to do that so to fix this, we need to actually go down in batch size to make sure that this training will no longer use the same amount of VRAN and then we can actually train it. And so 25. And I'm gonna create a new folder just to start from scratch. No, nothing for the past. And then start training. And then hopefully, and you see uh, a single batch size of 25 is still too much for single GPU. Uh, let's try 15 let's hit start training and then you see is we still no longer be able to do a 15 you can see that we are being hitting by a VRAN issue because we just have one now it we need to go really really low so bed size of 8 start training And here we go, we managed to get and run on a bad size of 8, which is great. Uh, let's see the view rain again. Yeah, this is good, 85 to 90%, it's good. Otherwise, you're hitting too much, you're limiting too much of GPU. And so, bad size of 8 is a good value to train in one single GPU, even though it's a large model. So, let's see for how long it will need uh for the first 10,000 epochs so let's wait a little bit so we know how much longer we'll need hey guys so here we go we got estimation uh, around 32 hours and still going up heavily so that is the main difference before we had some sort of five to six hours ish and now we we are more than a day 
and probably go into two days of training same data set same settings and of course we need to reduce the bed size to fit and just one card so that's it that's it. it's pretty much the main difference between uh, multi GPU and and one GPU training and what's super nice feature that has been added on one of the latest uh, Nuke versions this is very welcome for the folks that do does heavily training so so let's deep dive and uh and if you're interested to know what's going on on this uh script let's do it so let's move on and uh one thing that is important to understand here uh the this uh multi gpu train works it's looking to this image i think this explain for itself what this multi GPU means which you know every worker is doing its job so it, you can parallel your data processing and then you get faster times and faster iteration uh, you know and then I'm gonna leave this article so if you want to really go deep dive and understand the technical these are good articles if you want to go deeper but uh, so just to touch that briefly, one way of understanding that it's by there is a few ways that a model, uh, a AI model trains, and uh, one of the common ways when you have multi GPU is splitting your batches. So uh, as you say in here in the picture, you have a copy and then you have a portion of the batch per GPU, and then that. It doesn't scale linear, but it scale in a very faster way because you have part of your batches on each of those GPUs and each of those GPUs and it's processing those to update the model later. So that's why, you know, when when we reduce the from 50 that we had before to just eight and the time was a lot different because, you know, that's what what happened and that is ways that uh you know when when uh you can do for training our models you have like the splitting the batch for training and then you can also do you know you can split the model which is a different way of training just to explain that that is so much different that is tons of different ways that you can choose from and if you really go scale that is also the multi nodes so we have different uh different uh, machines and then each machine has also split in different GPUs so we are really scaling really really big so we can you know so if you have uh, people had to, has thousands of GPUs to train really really big models but back to the point here you know there is a, a few ways and the, one of the most common is when you split the batches and over across of your GPUs and then you speed up the training and uh, but again back to this image I think is the best way of explaining how the multi GPU train works so and copycat we pretty much have you know these options to play with and the most important one for you know when you're scaling multi GPU is the bat size of course and the size of your model but if you are in multi gpu probably you're gonna go to the large option and then you want to really push the levels and uh, so the bed size it's pretty much the number of how much samples you are feeding to the model to train so if i have a bed size of 100 for example will be 100 samples that is feeding to train um, this case that I was doing was um, a bed size of 50, which is 50 samples. A bed size of 8, it's pretty much 8 samples. And that's why when we change those values, we also change the number of total steps. So if I would do 200 samples, you see that the steps would be a, a lot lower to hit the 10,000 epochs here. Ooh, so, and then epochs just means that you each epoch means that you pretty much pass through all of your samples through the model so it means that 10,000 epochs your your the model has seen 10,000 times all of your samples of your data set so but the most important here is pretty much the bad size in my opinion and uh, because you know 
the bad size is directly attached and linked to the what your hardware is capable to do it of course you have also the resolution which you can change to play that trick of i'm gonna crop my samples in small pieces so you know i can train the same uh the same parameters but uh, it's you know i like to usually feed the best like try to not slice the samples try to be like straight but you know if you have like a 2k uh, uh, f uh 2k resolution frame and then you paint it or you do whatever and then so that you need to crop because you otherwise you're gonna need so much hardware so crop is also important but uh, you also can crop that before you feed so it's all up to the artists and to you what to do uh, so pretty much that's it I'm gonna leave more of this these articles so it can explain a lot better than I was to doing here so what the best size it means and then of course you can go for yourself and read and then learning it which I think is really important really interesting especially in the uh, for the future because machine learning will be with us for sure more and more on our workflows so that's it guys uh pretty much uh just to show you this uh you know it doesn't matter much because data everyone has his own data to train so it doesn't matter much but just so so if you're curious there's a this is a pretty long data set uh it's a open public data set called celeb a and then uh, what uh, a big shout out to assistant gabriel that helped me uh on you know roto and make these samples for ai to train so we pretty much have 500 frames paint of obstruction so we have hands in front of the face and microphone and stuff whatever it is in front of the face and this is a big big data set at least 500 frames and then yeah that so he was really <laughs> really uh, good and prepping this work and labeling labeling this uh, with this roto and then once this was done then we feed for a cop cat model this was just an example because feeding 500 frames would be a lot so uh, what i did i just copy 50 so i could show you quickly the timings and uh and you know the estimations and uh we could go over of that on this tutorial uh that's it pretty much guys uh see you next time bye